In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the components of the retina and try to understand the functions of the various cells in the retina. In this drawing, you can see some of the cells that make up the retina. Here in the back, we have what are called the photoreceptors. These are actually the cells that sense light and will convert the light into a neural signal. We'll discuss that process which is called transduction in a later video. There are multiple types of receptors, photoreceptors in the retina. There are rods and cones. This drawing illustrates the rods. The rods have different parts to them. The outer segment is this back part of the rod that we can see here. We also have what's called an inner segment here. For us, we'll mostly be concerned about the outer segments where light is converted or transduced into neural signals. These photoreceptors connect to another type of cell known as a bipolar cell. And you can see here that there's a synapse or a gap in between these photoreceptors and this bipolar cell. The bipolar cell transmits signals to the next cell in the retina. That cell is known as a ganglion cell. Ultimately, the ganglion cell serves as the gateway to the brain. If the ganglion cell sends signals, then those signals will be transmitted to the brain if the ganglion cell does not send signals, then no information leaves the retina to go back to the brain. The signals that are going to the brain will be taken along this axon that comes off of the ganglion cell. I've only drawn part of it here. And each ganglion cell would send its own axon. Those axons will gather together in the retina to form the optic nerve that leaves the brain. Now that we know the basic parts of the retina, we can take a look at a little bit about how the light enters. You can see here that light actually enters the brain, I'm sorry, the retina from this side. And so it's going to move in this way and has to actually get all the way back here to the photoreceptors before it can cause any type of effect that may lead to vision. So it's important for us to remember that the front of the eye is toward the left side and the back of the eye is here towards the right side. At the very back of the eye, we have a layer of tissue that I've represented here known as the pigment epithelium. Now, it might be a curious thing for us and we may wonder why is it that the light has to pass from the left side going past the ganglion cell and the bipolar cell until it reaches the photoreceptor. We really don't completely know the answer to this question. Not all eyes are designed this way. Some species have their eyes with the photoreceptors out in the front. I'm sorry. Yeah, the retina is designed with the photoreceptor out in front and then the other cells behind it. But in mammals, we get this particular design, and we believe that the reason for this is the chemicals that are used in the photoreceptors have to be converted uh, into a form that makes them sensitive to light again. We'll talk about that later. But that conversion takes place in the pigment epithelium. In addition to that, the, the uh, chemicals that are used in photoreceptors do eventually wear out and they have to be broken down in the pigment epithelium or else they can cause damage to the photoreceptors that leads to blindness. So in summary, we've learned that the photoreceptors are at the back, that they are the ones that actually transduce the light into a neural signal, that the signal that they send goes to the bipolar cell, and ultimately the bipolar cell then causes changes in the ganglion cell. If the ganglion cell fires, then we will have signals being sent along those axons, along the optic nerve, and back to the brain. One other thing, 
I've only le drawn in one bipolar cell here, but you could see that there would possibly be connections to other bipolar, um, with other bipolar cells here in this area. And of course, there would be other photoreceptors attached to that. That completes this video.